So that's just scraping that background away? Yeah. Just working my way down. And I've got that wire one. Which is getting me trued back up some. To me, it's always seemed kind of odd they did this kind of work on these guns because it's kind of a pain in the butt. And there's no, that I've ever discovered, any shortcuts to it. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. Especially on curly wood like this. I mean, you have no, <laughs> no give. Yeah, the, the grains just want to do, you know, all kinds of nice little tricks for you. None of which you had ordered. So you're really limited what you can do going in there with a blade. Uh, because it'll grab, you know, hook mm -hmm. and go under. Or chip something out. So is that why there's so much use of scrapers? Yeah, then, I over think chisels? so. I think so. Scraper can only get you in so much trouble. Hmm. Blade can get you in a lot of trouble really fast. And you're removing the background, not just near the carving, but pretty well, far away. Yeah, because if you get too close, then you get a dive. Okay. And you don't want that. You want the carving to look like it's applied, so to speak. And so you're, you've got to work your way out to get everything leveled back up, so to speak, so that it looks right. So I went in with a chisel first and kind of removed my bigger pieces of wood and then went back in and with that file and kind of leveled it up where I could and then start scraping it back in. Then I'll take a little sanding stick and go in there and clean everything up as best I can and then um, use it to just ever so slightly break the edges so it's not too sharp. I don't think it looks good if it's too sharp. Mm. I mean it's a new gun but it's it's almost like it's too crisp. Right. See that right there? You got the cut. And you're not down to the level yet. And so you get a dive line right there at your carving. Which you don't want. You want that to... You want it to appear that the carving is just on top of the wood. Once the finish is on it, it'll kind of go in and hide some of it anyway. Advantage that little skew is you can get into corners that are tight, mm -hmm. work your way in there. See here, I'm just kind of planing with it. Not quite like a scraper, but very near. Right. And I like that really. Uh, see, it's hooking right there. It's trying to catch that. There's a bump right here. It goes down, comes up, and that's got to go away. So you come at it from. So I'm going to go across it. Yeah. It wasn't liking what I was doing, so. Let's try something different. A lot of this is just kind of reading the grain, and if tools start digging or hooking, it's saying, okay, can't do that, so what am I going to do? And Just go approach it from a different angle. A lot of this is just going slow. And you can see how now that's just the leaf above the field 
were here, you can still see the mm -hmm. the groove it's in there. at the same plane still. Right. And so the key is just to take that out of there. And you can see how curly that wood is right there. I mean, yeah. it's micrograins going 60 different directions. Beautiful. Yeah, except when you're trying to reduce it. <laughs> it kind of makes it hard to tell how deep you are. Right, it really does. And that goes back to the directional light, having that sunlight on here. Or if I was working at night, having directional light off my light on here. Because if you just had overhead flat light you you'd never know where you were yeah you just never know where you were and you'd think your gun was done you take it out in the sun and you'd go oh crap man the thing was like crap so you cut your main lines in yeah. and now you're reducing the background right and then is it detail carving or is it then it's going in and doing a little bit of relief on this to give it a little bit of a three-dimensional look okay go in and like here this one's got to go under this one okay and there'll be some other veins cutting these and you know some other detail work done um, i just see it as main lines background and then the detail stuff after that is kind of how I do it. I imagine different guys work different ways. Yeah, there's always a million different ways to do it. Yeah. And that's the nice thing with skew. You can kind of use it as a knife, like I did right there. I don't have to switch tools out. I can just stand it up on end. You can kind of do that stabbing. Yeah, people talk about a lot with long rifles. Yeah, a lot of guys like to stab stuff in. I'm more of a cutter than a stabber, which is a lot more dangerous. But it's kind of, I don't know, it's how I kind of like to work. So it's teach his own kind of on how you do it all. Well, I imagine your experience with woodworking kind of lends itself more to the cutting. Yeah, might make me a little more comfortable with it than uh, some people would be. That narrow scraper is really nice and cuts really fast, but sometimes it wants to cut too much, <laughs> too quickly. You don't want to end up with a divot. No. What you're after is just a really nice, gentle blend is what you're doing. You're just cheating the eye. It's like any kind of shallow relief carving would be done. Is your eyes just tricking things? key there is using that one thumb as a fulcrum so you're not just pushing blindly that's a real dangerous place to be carving right there because you can't tell how deep you are okay. going through that little area I started getting too deep so I just backed out of it That's carved to about right here, and then release back out. And it flips, and this is reduced into it. Now this is easy, the way they did this stuff. I don't think they did it to be easy. No, I don't think they did it to be easy. 
I've done enough of it that I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, there's nothing. Nothing they did that was... Well, let's make it easy for the guys that want to copy us 100 year, 200 years from now. I think if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, and our Ruger 1022s would look like this. Look like this. 